All right, so these are audiobooks of my as of yet unpublished novels that I record specifically for my mother to listen to. If you discover them, great, enjoy them. I would love to have more listeners. This is a slightly older book. Kaido Organa by Elaine Allen. Chapter 1. Jaden looked out across the valley his older brother, Harold, Crown Prince of the Grand and Glorious Sarah Empire, had chosen for their battlefield. They'd arrived almost a week and a half before. Jaden never would have had the patience to wait for their enemy to come to them. But then that was one of the many reasons why his brother was given command of the Austerian campaign, and Jaden was given the meaningless title of second aide-de-camp. Not even first aide-de-camp. Jaden snorted silently. He didn't mind. It's not like he had the skills to lead a military campaign. The training, yes. King Owen had insisted that even his weak-spirited younger son be taught by the best generals alive. Jaden was fully aware of how smart his brother's choices were. The valley was just deep enough to give them the upper ground without being deep enough to risk the war horse's legs. The trees ringing the ridge would provide cover for their archers. The swamp on one side and the steeper slope on the other meant that it would be difficult for the Austerian army to flank them, and they were just far enough into Austerian territory that they could not be ignored. Many of the officers had been insistent that they push further. King Owen was determined to take at least the western county of Austera this season, and it was already mid-spring. They had at least 200 miles to take until they reached the grasslands, which, depending on everything from weather to these early fights, could either be an easy, uninterrupted march, or the kind of slow and costly slog that would lose them the war. Harold had chosen not to risk marching on and meeting the Austerian army on their terms. The delay here would save lives, even if it pushed the campaign into deep winter. Unless things went horribly wrong, the Sarah army would be in the grasslands by fall, where there wasn't enough snow to be a problem. The herds of wild oxen were abundant enough to feed armies five times their size, and in midwinter the Austerian grasslands were not as cold as Sarah's capital in early autumn. If anyone were to ask Jaden, he would agree wholeheartedly with his brother's choice. Jaden snorted again, this time not quietly enough for Harold's first aide-de-camp his real aide-de-camp, to miss. The old general gave Jaden a critical glance, and the young prince pulled his face straight. No one was going to ask Jaden for his opinion. He was here because King Owen wanted both his sons to have battle experience, because that was what Sarah Princes did. No one expected him to be useful. As long as he didn't make a complete fool of himself, everyone would be happy. Jaden glanced back at the dust cloud headed their way. As long as he didn't make a fool of himself, and he didn't get himself killed. He shook his head, dismissing the thought. Sarah Princes were warriors, first and foremost. This might be his first real battle, but it was hardly his first fight. He had killed his first man when he was fourteen, fighting southern raiders. He was not scared of the coming fight. Of course, judging by the size of the approaching dust cloud, they were going to be outnumbered. Jaden looked over at his brother. Harold was glaring out at the approaching army, a hand shielding his eyes from the nominal sun. Has Duncan's party made it through the swamps? Jaden listened intently for the answer. He knew Lord Duncan of Upper Delve led a party of thirty warriors, but Jaden hadn't been invited to the command tent for two days. He had no idea what Duncan's party was doing in the swamp. He could guess easily enough. Getting even a small force behind the enemy line would change the outcome of almost any battle. General Harris shook his head. We haven't gotten his signal yet. Harold shrugged as if it did not matter. Jaden stared down at the dust cloud. The Sarah army was only a little over 300 strong. If something had happened to Duncan's party, it would be almost a tenth of their force gone. Sarah relied on superior skills, strategy, weapons, and armor, but Jaden was guessing the Austerans numbered to be more than double theirs. Even the Sarah army wasn't going to find it an easy fight at those odds. Harold was frowning, but it was a subtle frown. He couldn't afford to let his officers think him unsure. Well, we won't wait. I don't want to let them settle. We attack as soon as the vanguard passes the stream. Cavalry charge first, ride straight through the line, and stay past the stream until two volleys of the archers. Foot soldiers will then engage. The officers were nodding, and Jaden knew this had all already been discussed. Details hammered out, positions assigned, contingencies put into place— all the basic command decisions that Harold had been probably suffering over for days. Jaden knew that his omission from the command tent had been purposeful. 
and had chosen not to draw any attention to it by asking questions. Just like he hadn't drawn attention when he saw the officers were gathering without him. He had just silently joined them, and when his brother had glanced his way, he had smiled like it didn't matter. Harold had turned away with barely contained disdain. Harold nodded to General Harris, who whistled sharply. Two notes that were picked up and carried through the camp. Everywhere the sound went, men dropped what they were doing, readied their weapons, and ran for their regiments. Captains stepped out as soon as their men were in place, leading them towards the lip of the valley, and Jaden swallowed aside. Even the men knew the formations. He was the only person in camp to not know his brother's plans. At least he knew his own part. Even if it were a meaningless title that the newest recruit would recognize as empty, being the second aide-de-camp gave Jaden his place in the lines, his brother's left-hand side. As long as he followed Harold, it didn't matter that his brother had not told him anything. Unless both Harold and General Harris were injured. With a weak smile, Jaden realized why he was the only person to be excluded from strategizing. Harold had ensured that if something did happen to him, his younger, weaker brother would have to defer to basically everyone else on the field. He had removed all but the barest illusion of command. It didn't matter. Harold was a strong fighter. Even outnumbered, Jaden knew his brother would make it through this fight triumphant. His smile grew stronger as he took his place at his brother's side. The crown prince glanced back, more to assess the troops than anything, but his eyes brushed across Jaden, and for a moment his gaze hardened, something almost like shame flitting behind his eyes before he looked past. Jaden forced his grin to remain in place and turned to watch the approaching army. The horse danced anxiously below him, but Jaden held it firm. They were close enough now that Jaden could make out individual figures. The Austera knights tended to wear heavy armor that made moving around on foot difficult, and so most were on horseback. Compared to Sarah warriors, who wore only light armor, light steel chest plates and helmets, Austera knights wore full plate, usually over chainmail. Sarah warriors made it a joke, saying Austerian soldiers were cowards hiding behind a wall of metal. And it didn't help. Sarah's higher quality weapons cut through Austerian armor like cheese. Jaden grinned morbidly. Like very hard cheese. A small party broke from the Austerian line and rode their way. Jaden glanced towards Harold. This would be the Crown Prince's first time leading a parlay, and though Harold had many strong traits, Jaden did not think of him as particularly diplomatic. At least this was a negotiation he couldn't get wrong. They were going to fight no matter what the Austerian generals had to say. Jaden froze mid-stretch as his brother turned to look at him. Under Harold's disdainful gaze, he slowly put his arms down at his side, sitting up straighter and trying not to flinch. Try not to draw attention to yourself. The crown prince's tone was sharp as daggers. Without waiting for his younger brother to reply, Harold kicked his horse down the hill into the valley. Jaden sighed and followed, just behind General Harris. They met the Austerian generals just past the stream, just out of bowshot from both armies. Neither party got off their horses, just rode to within easy shouting distance and stopped. This would not take long. I am General Boren, in representation of the first Austerian guard. In the name of King Jarek of Austera, I demand an explanation as to why you have brought this army onto Austerian lands. Harold's mount, probably sensing its master's annoyance, tried to dance its way out from under him. He held the animal firm. I am Prince Harold, High General of the Army of the Grand and Glorious Sarah Empire. I have brought this army to take this land. And that was it. No explanation of why Sarah had any right to this land, no offer to negotiate, no pretenses at all. The Austerian general stared at him blankly. This was not how he had expected this to go. Jaden fought down a completely inappropriate snicker. General Harris was watching him, even if Harold was not. But really, what was the point? Either they would take this land or not. Any negotiations, concessions, compromises, agreements would be made afterwards. Jaden glanced at General Harris, but the older man's face was impassive. Sarah warriors prided themselves on being direct, but Harold took the virtue to the point of fault. Harold waited a moment for the Austerian general to respond, but the man seemed too bemused to say anything. So Harold turned pointedly away, leading his party back across the shallow stream. They stopped where the hill started to rise. Jaden glanced back at the Austerian general. The man was riding hard back towards his troops. Then he glanced up at the hill towards the Sarah army. The cavalry was massing on the hill, but was not coming to meet them. Nor was Harold making any effort to rejoin the troops. Then Jaden made the connection. 
why Harold had been verging on Rude, and why he was waiting here separated from his troops, like bait. All Harold's careful planning would be useless if they couldn't draw the Asterans into the valley. Other than Harold, Harris and himself, the parlay party, included two squires, and with a sinking feeling in his stomach, Jaden realized they both were carrying two large shields. Sarah warriors didn't use shields in battle. Before the Asteran general even reached his troops, he was shouting his commands. Several men pulled their horses forward, and even at the distance, Jaden could see the longbows. He swallowed and glanced at his brother. As the Asteran archers lined up, Harold and Harris's squires handed them shields. "'Where's your squire, Jay?' Jaden could not keep the grimace off his face as he looked at his brother. "'He didn't have a squire. No boy had ever wanted to learn the arts of war from Sarah's younger prince. "'Well, step behind Finley. His shield should keep you safe.' Jaden gritted his teeth, trying not to glare at his brother. Hiding behind a squire would destroy any semblance of honor he had managed to maintain. "'Now, Jay!' Jaden looked up and saw the arrows. He yanked hard on his reins, pulling his horse behind the squire's shield. The shields caught most of the first volley, though General Harris's horse took a arrow to the chest, bucking the older man off before running off to die. Jaden realized something else. Harold was not riding his normal mount, which meant he had planned for this, too. Another volley of arrows landed, taking one of the squire's horses and catching Harris's squire in the leg. But the Austerian army was finally advancing. Prince Harold held up his arm, a ready signal, but held out, ignoring the third volley of arrows raining down on them. Jaden's horse jumped suddenly, and he knew the animal had been hit, but it neither bucked him off nor ran. Then Harold dropped his arm. Jaden could feel the horses storming down the hill behind him, but did not even have the time to glance at the troops, because Harold was already starting forward himself. General Harris was retreating to join the foot soldiers, but Jaden kicked his horse into motion to follow his brother. With the rest of the army far behind, Jaden had to stay with the crown prince. He was the only backup available. Jaden drew his sword right before they hit the enemy line, slamming his sword into a man's head without stopping to look at him. Against Austerian soldiers, fighting was all blunt force. Skill could come back into things when the numbers were a bit more even. He dodged under a pike and checked where his brother was. Harold was not that far in front of him, but with no one but his squire as backup, Jaden needed to be closer. He could feel the Sarah Calvary behind them, but anything could happen in the moments it would take for them to catch up. He pushed on, slamming the pommel of his sword into an Austerian helmet. His horse reared, kicking out at an Austerian horse. They tended to be taller and longer-legged, which made them more easily lamed. The horse threw its rider, and the man was trampled by the soldiers behind him. Jaden pulled his horse around and looked up just in time to see a pike heading for his brother's back. He struck out, cutting the wooden shaft off near the soldier's hand, and twisting to drive his blade up into the man's exposed face. The blade stuck and almost pulled out of Jaden's hand as the soldier fell. He yanked at it and felt movement behind him. He spun, but Harold had already slammed his sword into the soldier that had been aiming a blade at Jaden's back. He smiled at his younger brother, shouting, "'Watch your back, Jay!' before turning away. Jaden yanked hard one last time, finally freeing his sword, just in time to fend off a giant Austerian soldier." Jaden was not the best fighter. He could barely keep up with his brother, but he fought tooth and nail to at least keep the crown prince within his line of sight. He was only vaguely aware of the flow of the battle. He definitely noticed when the rest of the cavalry caught up, three of Harold's closest companions, young lords Harold had trained with since he was five years old, pushed past Jaden to fight at their prince's side. He also noticed when the Sarah infantry joined the fight. The flow changed, pushing back across the small valley as Austerian soldiers fell and were trampled over by Sarah warriors. It was coming up on noon when Jaden looked around and realized they were winning. What had been the kind of close-quarters fighting that barely gave his horse room to turn without trampling someone was now the kind of loose formation that left yards between combatants. And where he had been fighting in a sea of Austerian soldiers, with maybe one or two allies within his sight line, now Sarah warriors dominated the field. Almost as if he, too, had just noticed, Harold reared his horse up, calling for warriors to follow. When he charged down the valley, heading for the retreating, regrouping Austerian forces, Jaden followed. They were well past the second stream, nearing the swamp, when Jaden's horse shied. The animal had been growing distinctly slower, weaker throughout the day, bleeding out from the arrow shot it had gotten hours before. Now the horse was floundering, but he did not dismount. They were riding right into a rank of Austerian foot soldiers. No matter how weak his horse was, it still gave him the height advantage. Jaden was so preoccupied with keeping his mount steady that he almost didn't notice that all the horses were fighting their riders. 
Then a sound cut across the battle, above the deafening noise of swords, horses, and dying, a roar, inhuman and full of violence. Jaden's horse buckled one no. Jaden's horse bucked one final time, and he fell hard. He was on his feet before he realized what that sound had been. That was a bear. The roar came again, and Jaden spun instinctively. Maybe twenty yards away was a giant brown bear, probably ten feet tall and well over a thousand pounds. It charged through the Osseran ranks and into the Sarah Calvary. Only a few feet away, Harold was also unhorsed, staring. The bear charged it by, and Harold turned to follow it. He caught a glimpse of his brother and shouted, Tamron! Jaden swallowed, but had no more time to stare. He blocked the sword of an Osteran soldier, trying not to collapse under the weight of the blow. Osteran armor was not just heavy for the soldier, it added weight to every blow. The presence of Tamron explained why none of the soldiers here were mounted. Tamron and horses did not mix in battle. When they left Sarah weeks ago, Harold had taken their campaign to the south, hoping to avoid the Tamron entirely. They were Osteran allies, but it was a loose allegiance at best. Harold had hoped that if they did not threaten the Tamron lands directly, the Tamron would not get involved. Another roar cut across the fight, and Jaden fought to focus on the soldier right in front of him. That had sounded like a cougar. He should get to Harold. Jaden slashed out, slamming his blade into an austere helmet hard enough to drop the soldier, but before he could push his way to his brother, a man stepped in front of him. For just a second, an almost deadly second, Jaden thought he was a Sarah warrior that he did not recognize. He was not wearing austere armor, but he wasn't wearing Sarah armor either. Hell, he wasn't wearing armor. Leather arm guards were the closest, which wouldn't stop anything. He wasn't even wearing a shirt. Jaden dodged back as a knife almost as long as a short sword flashed towards him. This man was fast. Faster than Jaden, who held his sword out in front of him as a shield, but still had to jump back as the knife the man held in his other hand slashed under his guard. Jaden retaliated, aiming to at least knock one of the knives out of the man's hand, but he found it not nearly that easy to disarm his new opponent. He stepped back again, trying to assess. The man was huge, towering over the not exceptionally short Jaden. He had to be over seven feet tall, and while he was what Jaden would only describe as lean, his shoulders were broad and muscular. There was something just a little bit savage about him. His black hair was long, but shaved on both sides. His features were strong but sharp in a long face, and under Jaden's assessing gaze, he grinned, showing teeth. Jaden froze, for just a moment lost in thoughts completely out of place in a battle. Then another roar to his right pulled him back. The man did not even flinch, but Jaden raised his sword back up. No matter what the man looked like, he was between Jaden and his brother, and Harold was just the kind of stupid brave to try and take on one of those beasts by himself. Jaden took a deep breath and slammed forward, swinging at the man's knees, hoping to cut under his guard. But he hadn't thought about the sheer length of the man's reach. He caught Jaden's sword on one of his knives, spinning up to catch Jaden's chest. Most of the blow was caught on Jaden's chest plate, but he could feel the dent it left, driving into his ribs. Then he felt the knife slide up to slice open his collar where the armor did not cover. He gasped, instinctively dragging his sword up to catch the second knife before it could drive in under his armor. That slice had gone to the bone, no question, but Jaden didn't have time to feel the pain. He twisted the blade, catching the knife in his cross guard and holding it, and immediately reached out, desperately grabbing the man's other hand before he could use his second knife. Adrenaline lent Jaden strength, but this man was strong. Stronger than Jaden by far. He did not try to pull away, instead pushing against Jaden's grip, inching both knives closer to the smaller man's exposed throat. Jaden looked up into his eyes and felt time slow. The low sunlight caught his opponent's eyes, painting them a sharp gold and momentarily blinding him. He froze, and Jaden saw his chance. He kicked out, slamming a foot into the man's leg. The giant of a man fell to his knees, almost gently, like he was kneeling in the blood-churned mud. Jaden raised his sword, but at that last moment reversed his grip, slamming his hilt down onto the back of the man's head. He folded at Jaden's feet, landing face down in the mud, and for a moment Jaden couldn't tear his eyes away. Jaden took a breath, forcing his gaze up, but before he could find his brother, his instincts kicked in. He ducked, and a sword whistled through the space where his neck had been. Jaden spun. This one was a woman, tall with black hair, but that was all Jaden could take in as the woman swung her sword again. Jaden blocked, but the force of the blow overbalanced him, throwing him down in the mud, his shoulders ringing with shockwaves. 
He raised his sword in front of him desperately, knowing that it would not be enough to save him, but before the final blow landed, she flew backwards, an arm around her waist. The crown prince lifted her straight off her feet, slamming her backwards into the ground. Jaden knew from experience that the breath had been knocked out of her, but she didn't pause, jamming her sword up at her attacker. Harold barely caught the stab, swiping his sword in front of him. He followed the swing, driving a knee down into the woman's sternum. Her arm, still gripping the sword, flew up, almost taking Jaden in the face, and after flinching away, he jumped forward, grabbing the hilt. She held on, twisting her arm until she could use her elbow to pry against Jaden's grip at the same time that she kicked Harold's sword right out of his hands. It was the best Jaden could do just to hold her sword in place as Harold brought his foot down on her chest, hard enough to probably break a rib or two. She curled around herself, but it seemed not in pain because her feet shot out at the crown prince again, catching him hard in the side of the knee. Harold stumbled, but kicked out, his foot crashing into the side of her head. Finally, she collapsed and did not get back up. Without another glance at either the girl or his brother, Harold looked around, assessing the battle. There wasn't much of one left. The few Sarah Calvary still on horseback were chasing what appeared to be highly disorganized Austerian retreat. A quick estimate put the remaining Austerian force at under a hundred. They had one. With a slight frown, Harold called, Someone bring me General Harris. Jaden, stay. Jaden let out a deep breath halfway between a sigh and relief, before stepping over the fallen enemy to join his brother. But Harold barely looked at him. Logan of Fulbright? The young man, really little better than a boy, who had been standing blankly nearby, nodded shakily. He had clearly just survived his first fight, and was about ten seconds from either collapsing or breaking down in tears. Harold clapped a hand on his shoulder and offered him a warm grin. Until General Harris arrives, I want you to start checking the enemy. Survivors should be chained and led back to camp. Leave the dead, yes? The boy nodded. Young as he was, he knew how dishonorable it was to handle the corpses. His face was solemn, as it should be. This was a job for someone of a much higher rank. Almost as if to the highlight that, Harold added, Grab the first ten warriors you find to help you until General Harris arrives. When the boy had scampered off, Harold turned to his younger brother. You seem to have survived all right. Jaden smiled half-heartedly at him. He didn't have to sound so surprised. Barely a scratch, and you're not even bleeding. Harold shrugged, his face impassive. You missed one. The crown prince nodded, and Jaden knew towards what before he even turned. The young warrior, Logan, was yanking a tall man to his feet. Jaden swallowed, unsure what to say. Beneath Harold's foot, the woman shifted, and without giving her more than a glance, he dropped the tip of his sword to rest against her neck. Even covered in mud, it was clear she was not the normal Austerian soldier, most obviously because Austerian women did not fight, but also because she, like the man Jaden had fought, was wearing nothing by way of armor. As he looked down at her, her eyes met his, black and sharp as a blade, and Jaden found his voice. You did too. Harold glanced down at his prisoner, who met his gaze with a disdain that seemed wholly out of place with a sword at her throat. Couldn't bring myself to kill her. He shrugged, his grin taking on a certain appreciative tone. Seemed like a waste. Jaden glanced back at the tall man, looking almost like a statue, even dripping bloody mud. Exactly. The word slipped out before Jaden could think better of it. He tore his eyes away from the man and back to his brother. The almost companionable grin was gone, replaced with that empty coldness. Harold turned away. Gather our wounded and dead, he paused, and when his brother did not run off immediately, he added, Now, Jaden. The crown prince yanked the girl up off the ground and hauled her across the field to the already growing chain of enemy prisoners, leaving Jaden standing alone in the mud. He gritted his teeth and grinned at the warriors near enough to have heard the exchange. Gathering the wounded and dead was not a warrior's task. Hell, it was so low that Jaden couldn't even command any warriors to help him without offering such insult as would have to be answered immediately. He would have to troop back to camp himself to call the servants, the camp leeches, and the crows, men so low in honor that all they could do in battle was burn the dead. The implied association between Jaden and these men was not lost on him.